When I was in high school, my friend's parents went out of town, so we had a few of us over. This story happened well before we started drinking, so I was 100% sober. After a long day of just messing around and doing guy stuff, I got tired and decided to go inside and upstairs to their family room to take a nap. His parents were really big on traveling, and they collected artifacts from every place they'd ever been. The coolest things in that room were the African masks and statues. They were all facing in different directions. Anyway, I went to sleep on the couch, and I had just barely closed my eyes when I heard someone walking up the stairs. A second later, they entered the room I was in, so I opened my eyes to see who it was. Not only was no one there, but the sound of the footsteps kept advancing towards me. They never stopped, and when I looked down, I could actually see the floorboards moving along with the footsteps. I jumped up and turned to run, and that's when I saw that every single African mask and statue had turned on their own and were now all staring straight at me. I sprinted down the stairs and outside, and I tried to explain to the guys what happened, but they all just laughed at me. Of course, when we all went back upstairs, everything looked normal again. But I have goosebumps just writing about this. It was the scariest experience of my life, hands down. Two years ago, my parents went out for the night, and I was home alone. At one point, I heard the sound of shattering glass coming from the basement. I went down to see what was going on, and found the wine glass collection that was over the bar had been smashed against the far wall. All thirty of them. Nobody was in the house, and all the windows and doors were locked, and I had the only key. It was weird considering the fact that they were hanging from the ceiling above the bar a good 20 feet across the room from the wall they smashed against. How that happened, I'll never know. When my mom and dad got home, they didn't believe me when I told them what happened. They thought I did it, so they grounded me. I still get yelled at today when the subject comes up. So screw you, ghost. During college, I lived on campus. The dorm room doors only locked from the inside, and the hallway lights were on a motion sensor after 10 p.m. to save power, so the hallway would be dark unless someone were walking down it. It was past midnight, and my roommate and I were in our dorm with the door locked. I was sitting at my desk working on my laptop, using only the computer screen for light because he was trying to get some sleep. I closed my eyes for what I perceived to be only a second, but when I opened them again, the computer screensaver was on, so everything was dark. It was set to do that if the computer had been idle for at least 15 minutes. In the dark, I heard my roommate thrashing around in bed and gasping for air. I called out to him and said, Hey Mark, are you okay? As soon as I said it, I heard him gasp like he had just come up for air out of a swimming pool. At that same moment, my hand bumped the mouse, and the computer screen light came on. Then our door flew open and slammed against the wall. It had been locked from the inside, and we heard footsteps running down the hall. I ran over to see who it was, and although I still heard the footsteps, no one was out there, and the hall lights were still off. Nothing had tripped the motion sensors. The hall lights only came on when I stuck my head out the door to see who it was. And yet, no one was there. When I stepped back into the room, a very angry Mark asked me why I thought it would be funny to hold a pillow over his face and try to suffocate him. I assured him I had done nothing of the sort. Then I told him what actually happened. The next day, we asked to be transferred to another room. Have you ever felt the vibration of a subway train as it passes by you in the station? 
You know, that low, chest-rattling buzz? As a young kid, I was taking the trash out during a big ice storm, and I felt that vibration in my bones. As I walked down to the end of the driveway with my trash can in tow, that buzzing feeling got stronger and stronger. As I got to the end of the driveway, I saw from across the street a pale, barefoot little girl wearing nothing but a sundress. She had her back to me. Remember, this was during an ice storm. At that moment, there was no sound at all. No wind, no street noise, nothing. Clearly, something out of the ordinary was happening. My legs turned to jello, and my hands were shaking. When I tried to call out to the little girl to ask if she was okay, I found I couldn't speak at all. I could form the words, but they died before they could leave my mouth. Then the little girl turned around, and I saw her face was made up only of what seemed to be white static, kind of like what you see on a TV station that isn't coming in right. I ran back up to the house so fast, I slipped on the ice and skidded the last few feet to the front door. I've never seen her again, thank God. But sometimes I can still hear and feel that buzzing when I pull into the driveway. And when that happens, I always run inside as fast as I can. I had a boyfriend who died in high school, and I would visit his grave late at night. It always comforted me to talk to him. One evening, around 11 p.m., I spent about 10 minutes by his grave. Then I walked through the cemetery back to my car. Halfway back, I passed an old black man who looked to be about 80 years old. He was sitting on a bench with his legs crossed, smoking a cigarette, and he wore a big Panama hat. I nodded my head to say hello, but he just kept smoking his cigarette while staring me down. So I kept walking. I'd only walked a few steps past him when this thought hit me. Why is there an old man sitting in a cemetery all alone this late at night? I turned around to ask him, but there was no one there. I looked around, and there was no one anywhere in sight. All of a sudden, I felt the presence of evil, so I got back to my car as fast as I could, and I've stopped visiting the graveyard at night. As I was heading up to bed one night, I heard my partner walking on the stairs behind me. At the top of the stairs, I went straight into the bedroom, while she turned into the hallway bathroom. I didn't turn the light on in the bedroom, so the only way I could see was with the ambient light coming from the bathroom. As I was trying to plug in my cell phone to be charged, she closed the bedroom door so it got really dark. I yelled, Hey, open the door! I can't see anything in here! Just then the bedroom lights came on, so I figured she turned them on. There's a switch in the hallway right outside the door. So I called out my thanks to her, plugged in my cell phone, and got in bed. Fifteen minutes went by, and I realized she'd been in the bathroom for quite a while, and I hadn't heard her flush the toilet or walk out, so I checked to see if she was okay. I opened the bathroom door, and it was empty. I called out to her, and she answered me from downstairs. Confused, I went down to ask her if she had just been in the bathroom, but she said she hadn't been upstairs at all. So, who was that upstairs with me? Two weeks later, something similar happened to her. She was in the bedroom with the door closed. Suddenly, she heard a voice outside the door calling our cat's name. She opened the door, and the cat was sitting there. But there was no one else in the house. We still can't explain either incident. When I was 10, my grandmother was diagnosed with cancer. 
Shortly after that, my parents moved her in with us so they could help take care of her. The guest room became her room. Over the next year or so, her health declined, and it was clear that she was going to die soon. She eventually did die in the guest bedroom, surrounded by all of her family. After she died, Mom and Dad moved me into that room because it was bigger. But I always had a weird feeling when I was in that room. It was almost as if I was being watched. It really creeped me out. Weird things started to happen, things that I can't explain to this day. First of all, I was sitting on the floor in front of my TV playing Nintendo, when out of the blue, the tempered glass doors on my TV stand randomly shattered into hundreds of pieces. I was nowhere near it, and there was nothing I can think of to have caused it. A few months later, I was in bed. It was pretty late, and I heard some weird scratching noises coming from inside my closet. My closet was huge. It had four sliding doors and ran the length of the wall, and there was a section of it that still held some of my grandmother's belongings. I ran to get my dad because I was scared. He came in the room, looked around in the closet, and didn't see anything, so he told me to go to sleep. He was just leaving the room when out of nowhere, two of the closet doors slid completely open on their own. I don't know how to explain it, and trust me, I've tried. For the rest of my childhood, I refused to sleep in that bedroom, and I ended up making the living room couch my new bed. On a windy New England fall evening, my brother and I were at home alone. He was in middle school and I was in my sophomore year of high school. As was normally the case, whenever the wind was strong, the power went out. So he and I were sitting in the kitchen with a flashlight, talking about the stupid stuff that teenage boys talk about. Without warning, we heard something very heavy fall upstairs. It kind of sounded like a bookcase tipping over. At first I thought a tree fell on the roof, but when we heard the sound of something very heavy being slowly dragged across the entire length of the upstairs, I knew it wasn't a tree. The whole time my brother and I were completely silent, listening to whatever it was moving across the floor. We fixed our eyes on the ceiling where the sound was coming from, and our gaze followed the sound as it moved. Once it reached the other side of the house, the sound stopped. My brother and I sat there for a moment looking at one another. Eventually, I broke the silence and said, Uh, go upstairs and see what that was. He replied, Uh, no. So I said, Okay, I guess we'll have to go up together. We both slowly headed upstairs and looked around through every room, but we found nothing. Everything was still in place. So I convinced myself that it really must have been a tree that fell on the roof, even though I was pretty sure that sound came from inside the house and on the floor, not the roof. As we were heading back downstairs, in one of the rooms I noticed there was a bunch of leaves on the floor, and they looked like they'd blown in through the window. But when I checked the window, it was closed and locked. I quickly told my brother to check all the windows in the other rooms to see if they were locked too. We ran around checking all of the remaining windows, but all were closed and locked. I asked him if he knew how those leaves got on the floor, but he said he didn't. The way our house is set up, there's no way that anyone could have come in or gone out without passing us when we were sitting in the kitchen. And no one could have escaped out the upstairs windows because they were locked. And you can't lock them from the outside. And I highly doubt anyone could have slipped past us when we were searching the upstairs. It's just too small. We would have seen them. Thoroughly scared, my brother and I sat outside in the cold darkness, waiting for either the power to come on or our parents to come home before we would go back inside. Luckily, the lights came on, 
So we hid in the basement and distracted ourselves by playing video games until our parents came home. The next day I looked around outside the house, trying to find out what fell on the roof. But there was nothing to be found. We never did tell our parents, and all these years later, the memory still scares me. About two years ago, I moved in with my best friend and his girlfriend. The house used to belong to the girlfriend's grandmother, and she left it to her in her will. It was a really big house with three bedrooms and a bathroom upstairs, and a bathroom downstairs. They decided they wanted a bigger bedroom, so they made the dining room into the living room, and the living room into one big bedroom. When I moved in, I took one of the upstairs rooms. The upstairs was genuinely creepy. I always felt like I was going to wake up and see a ghost. While I never did see a ghost, something terrifying did happen. One night, my girlfriend stayed over. We rented a few movies and hung out. And when we went to sleep, everything was fine. But in the morning when we went downstairs, I found my two roommates really irritated with us. They told us we were way too loud the previous night, and we kept waking them up. Well, my girlfriend and I had no idea what they were talking about, so we asked him what they heard. He said his girlfriend woke up hearing really loud slapping sounds. She got scared thinking that I was hitting my girlfriend, so she woke him up, and they both listened. A few minutes went by, and they heard nothing, so they both went back to sleep. But as soon as they started drifting off, they were both jolted back awake by a really loud thud coming from upstairs. They said it sounded like somebody had stomped with both feet on the floor right above them. Now they assume that my girlfriend and I were having some kind of crazy sex or something. A few hours later, they were both woken up again to the sound of somebody sprinting up and down the hallway upstairs. Pissed off, my friend walked to the bottom of the stairs and shouted, What are you guys doing up there? It's four in the morning! The sound stopped immediately. He stood there staring up into the darkness, waiting for a reply that never came. Then he heard someone singing. He thought it was one of us, of course, and he told us to shut up and go to bed. Then he went back into his own room. As soon as he got back into bed, he heard someone humming at the top of the stairs, and that continued on until morning light. The two of them thought that we were trying to scare them or something, but we were asleep the entire night, and we heard none of what they were describing. That really creeped me out, because I had to sleep up there every night. My best friend from high school lived in a notoriously haunted house. Everyone at school knew about it. Apparently, it used to belong to her uncle, and the room that's now her sister's bedroom was used for Satan worship. There were all kinds of symbols on the walls and ceiling when they moved in, but her parents just painted over them. I don't think they even bothered to get the house blessed. One night I was staying over at her house after homecoming. We were up late just messing around, trying to scare each other and making fun of the whole haunted house thing. She asked me to go with her to the bathroom down the hall. She was afraid to go alone, because everyone in the house was sleeping and the rest of the house was pitch black. I said no, because I was scared too. Okay, fine. I'll go alone. But when she opened the bedroom door... I saw the silhouette of a very tall man standing behind her, in the kitchen. I could tell it wasn't anyone from her family, because none of them were that tall. I didn't know what to do. I was terrified, so I covered my eyes. She asked me what was wrong, and when I looked up, there was no one in the kitchen. The silhouette wasn't there anymore. I told her what I saw, 
and said I would come to the bathroom with her because I didn't want either of us to be alone after that. She argued that it may have been her dad, but there was no way it could have been her dad. That thing was far too tall. Besides, her dad was asleep in his room. Also, why would her father stand there in the pitch-black kitchen? It made no sense. Something else happened that night, too. I got a few phone calls from a restricted phone number on my cell, and when I'd pick up, a strange voice would be on the other end saying, I can see you. Over and over again. That was the last time I spent the night at her house. This happened back in 2018, when I was a nursing student doing my practicum. I was paired with a mentor, working the night shift in a hospital ward. It was midnight, and we were doing rounds, and I discovered that an elderly patient had died sometime in the night. My mentor called the doctor, then showed me the hospital protocol of bagging the body so it could be transferred to the morgue. We had to do it ourselves because there was very few staff working on the overnight shift. It was my first experience with a dead body as a nursing student, so I was very eager to make a good impression on my mentor and learn what to do. We had a porter come up with a stretcher and a body bag. The three of us put the man inside the bag, then transferred him from his bed to the stretcher. As we finished moving the body bag onto the stretcher, I turned around, and I will never forget what I saw. A large black mass was barreling towards me, fast. It came right up to my face, then disappeared. The most bizarre part was that I actually felt air from the mass coming towards me. It's the same feeling you get when someone runs past you and you feel that rush of air hit your face. No one else saw it, and I sure didn't tell them either but I kept thinking about it when we went down to the morgue together with the body. I clearly felt and saw something that night, and I've never spoken about it before, until now. I was 16 when this happened. Mom and I were staying at my older sister's house. We were staying in the bedroom in the newly renovated basement. My mom, sister, and her kids were all upstairs eating breakfast, while I was downstairs having a shower in the basement bathroom, right next to our bedroom. Everything was fine, until I got out and was drying myself off. The light started to flicker. At first I didn't think anything of it. I wrapped the towel around myself and went to open the door, but it wouldn't open. I thought maybe I had locked the door and just forgot, though I was sure I hadn't. I turned the lock and tried again, but it still wouldn't open. It was then that the light started to flicker even more rapidly, as if someone were quickly hitting the light switch on and off. I got scared and desperately tried to open the door, but it wouldn't budge no matter what I did. I was pushing and pulling the unlocked door, but it wouldn't open. The lights started to go on and off even faster. They were like strobe lights at that point. I yelled for help and my mom came running down the stairs. As soon as she got within 10 feet of the door, the lights went back to normal and the door opened up with no problem. All of us tried to replicate the issue with the door, but we couldn't. There was no problem with the lock on the door now. They thought the whole thing was hilarious. My sister said it was probably the steam making the lights flicker. But that doesn't explain why a door wouldn't open, no matter which way I turned the lock. But as soon as somebody else could see the door, it opened with no problem. Now when I visit my sister... I stay upstairs. I'd like to thank you for listening 
and for being my family of darkness. I'll be posting these longer videos with live chat every month or so, and in between I'll be posting shorts. So be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the live chat. So now, until next time, stay scared, my friends.